Hey guys, what is up? Awesome the sauce here. Hope you guys are having a great day. And welcome to a video that I know you all have been waiting for. Yeah, I've been spending the past week just getting a bunch of spellments on literally every wizard that I can. And I've learned a, a trick or two. You feel me? I've done it in a few different methods. I've done it on different levels. I've done it in a lot of ways. So I thought I'd make a video talking about all of the best ways to get spellments right now, where you should go for each school, and where you should go for each level in Wizard 101 right now. Now, I waited this long specifically to give you guys as complete of a picture as possible. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So I'm gonna actually split this video into two parts, all right? So the first part is gonna be for people that do not have a low level, and then we're gonna be talking about what low levels can do. If you don't have anybody that's low enough level to farm spellaments, your best bet is gonna be cantrips and retriever talents. And when we're talking about low level, basically the way that they design spellment farming in this update anyways, if you're in the world after the previous world, you can farm that previous world. So for example, right, if you're in Celestia, you can farm Dragonspire for rank 6 and rank 2 to 6, basically, Spellments. If you're in Mushu, you can farm Marleybone or Mushu, right? You can farm both of these worlds in order to get your Spellment. So once you are in the Zafaria questline, you you're too high level. You basically cannot farm Spellments by defeating bosses. So for me, I can't actually farm bosses, which is why this is the best method for people that are Zafaria or further. So if you're a max level here is in my opinion the absolute best strategy this is just something that i did literally on the first day that this came out i really wanted to test it and see if it worked and it absolutely does so first you need to unlock elemental retriever as a talent and spirit retriever if you want spirit talent now keep in mind this talent helps you get wooden chest spellaments so you need to find wooden chests and it also has a five minute cooldown but basically elemental retriever gives you fire ice storm and sometimes balance spellaments and spirit retriever lets you get life myth death and sometimes balance spellaments now retriever talents are not that easy to unlock they require quite a few tokens in order to unlock them even when you actually like manifest this talent it'll actually show up as locked at first and if you have elemental retriever you're gonna need elemental retriever tokens and fire tokens. And if you have spirit retriever, you need spiritual retriever tokens, and you also need myth tokens. Now, the retriever tokens, my favorite thing to farm is just a doomsday croc gauntlet, and you can make this very, very easy or very hard. The best way to do this, in my opinion, is to have a high level go in with an extremely, extremely low level. So what I basically did in order to get my retriever tokens, I basically just went on my boy Dustin, you know, and I have a second account with the low level, who's like level 40 or something, and we just went in together, and basically the difficulty of the bosses goes down a lot so you can basically just one shot first round with tempest or squaw wyvern so when you're doing the doomsday croc gauntlet there's actually two bosses that you should be looking out for in terms of getting elemental and spirit retriever it's not this first area at all it's after this first area so basically after that first area right there's another area right over here and you can basically, you can, you have to defeat like Krakotep, and there's also like a time butterfly, and you can defeat them. My advice is bring a low level, right? The first part should literally be a one shot, fast, easy clap. When you get to the second part, have the low level go in first, especially in the final part, and either have them hit for Krakotep or have them stun block your hitter for the time butterfly. And that's mainly because Krakotep, if you're going second, sometimes shields, so you want like a little wand hit before you tempest, and the time butterfly sometimes it stuns, so you want to stun block so that you can hit and not lose a turn in no time at all you'll get re your retriever tokens and you'll never have to do this again for retriever tokens it's a one-time grind once you unlock elemental retriever once you can hatch out any pet out like out of it and that will have an unlocked elemental retriever so that's a nice thing about this after you get your retriever tokens there are some other tokens that you are going to want to have in order to unlock it now these are generally just from pet training itself for me i've been pet training so much up to that point that it, you know it just wasn't hard like i have all of these death tokens i have like elemental tokens i have all the tokens that i could possibly need you should have spirit and elemental tokens pretty easily you get them very quickly just from just just from like training random like pets the hard ones however are fire token for elemental retriever and myth token for uh, a spirit retriever and those you're gonna have to train mega pets to have a chance of getting those tokens so if you don't have any fire tokens you have to train fire pets up to mega which i don't know maybe you can use that as an opportunity to make a cool fire pet who knows and the same goes for myth you're gonna have to make a few mega myth pets in order to get myth token now once you're there the hard part is actually done and the strat's pretty easy right what you just make a bunch of these pets i have one pet with elemental retriever on six wizards and just you, you do the following now so once you've made six pets with elemental retriever or spirit retriever it gets a lot easier obviously 
obviously you don't need to do six wizards worth. I did this because it's literally fast. And I feel like a lot of people, if they have a lot of max wizards, it's basically the best thing to do. But basically, you just make a bunch of the pets, take all of your wizards, go to the outside of Shirataki Temple, and basically all you have to do is just go into the sigil, open up a bunch of chests, and you basically have an endless chain of spellaments. And by the time the cooldown is done on the first wizard, if you've already been opening chests on six wizards, it'll be reset so you can keep on going. No matter what, there will be a wooden chest in one of four places. There'll be one right here where I'm standing. There'll be one right across the road, like over here. There'll be one on the way to the, like the little, you know, little end, right? So there'll be one on this corner right here. There'll be one in the middle of the road and that's actually where this one is. And you can literally click on Elemental Retriever and get like, you know, eight talents, you know, literally eight spellments, I guess, which is, you know, really awesome. And then if you're unlucky, there'll be one all the way at the end over here. And once you've retrieved, just log out, go back on your next wizard and just r rinse and repeat. You keep doing it. And the cooldown, which is about five minutes, it'll reset by the time you're back on the original wizard that you did this on. Now you can do this with elemental and spirit retriever as a max wizard and you don't have to farm any bosses. The hard part is simply just getting the actual town unlocked and making six of these or however many you need for however many wizards you have. It is tedious, but I mean, you know, at least it's something because otherwise there would be no way for you to get spellments as a max. Now the thing about Mushu chests is that you only get rank one one through five. So the next step is to get a bunch of your friends and open up cantrip chests in Dragon Spire. Now this does require a little bit of teamwork, but basically the reason why I recommend cantrips chests for the rank six spellments is because the Mushu chests are very reliable. There is no equivalent in Dragon Spire. There's no dungeon that you can just do and guarantee getting a bunch of wooden chests. So what I thought would be the best idea, honestly, and I tried this out and it did work, is just get a couple of people on your friends list and you basically can go anywhere really. A lot of people use the forum uh, in Dragon Spire because I think it has a lot of wooden chests like spawn so you could like easily do it. And basically what you can do is both all three of you can occupy different realms and comb the area until you find a cantrip chest. And how these cantrips chests work is that they require three people to do them. And you do need to do the cantrips quest in order to do this. But it's very quick. It takes like five minutes and you basically learn magic touch. And if there's three of you, you can open them up and you get like only rank six spellments. Which is why cantrips works. You can get your one through five from Mushu and you can get all of your rank six doing cantrips in Dragon Spire. It doesn't work as well when one person's looking and two other people are doing something else. That is the downside to this. But yes, cantrips chests are your best bet if you're a max level for rank six spellman. Now, this is definitely quite the process if you're a max wizard, but luckily, if you're not a max wizard, there is something much, much easier that you can do, and that's the second part of the spellman farming guide. This is for everyone who has not reached the Safari quest line, or they have one wizard that has it, right? You only need one. As long as you have that, you're good to go. So just to reiterate, these bosses can only drop you spellments if you're in the main quest line in Dragonspire or Celestia, and there's another way. If you're even lower level than that, you can defeat the Jade Oni and the badge that you get lets you get Dragon Spire Spellman drops. The best bosses to farm if you're trying to get Spellments by defeating bosses are all in Dragon Spire. Now, there's three that I recommend and it literally just depends on your school. Now, let's say that you have a lot of different schools on your account. Then the best one to farm is Zarathax. And what Zarathax is, he's a boss in the Tower Archives. I believe he's a final boss of this area, but he's a balance boss. And basically, I guess how they designed him, he drops 14 spellaments every time you defeat him. And every time you do defeat him, you'll get any 14 spellaments. So you get balance, you get fire, you can get myth, you can get literally any spellment from him. That's rank two to six at the moment. This works really well if you have a lot of schools, right? That way there's, you know, you don't have to like target a specific school to get spellments for. You can just get spellments for everyone. It is very slow progress because obviously, yes, 14 spellments is a lot, but there's a lot of spells, right? There's literally rank two to six, which is five per school and there's seven. So there's 35 spellments that you could potentially get. But yeah, this boss has a lot of people farming it. Every time you beat him, you get 14 spellments regardless of the school. But what if you're like an elemental school or what if you're a spirit school only, right? What if you only need mid spellments? What if you only need storm spellments? Well, then there are other bosses to farm. If you need mainly elemental spellments, in my opinion, the best person to farm is the sea lord who is in the plaza of conquest. So if you take the teleport stone over here, these bosses have really not ever, you know, been something that people farm a lot, but I recommend this one a lot. Basically, you just go to the crack 
dragon statue over there, and you can, as long as you have, like, a small group of people to farm with, you can probably just one-shot them every time. So you just go to the crystal stand, and you'll summon them, and as long as you're low enough level, this guy will drop you tons of elemental, uh, uh spellments, and it doesn't have that much HP, so I think it's pretty easy. Now, if you have a storm hitter, then I recommend Boris Blackrock. He's also a boss in Dragon Spire that can be summoned by a crystal. But yeah, he's also pretty good. He's in the Crucible, I believe. Uh, but yeah, both of these bosses drop elemental spellments. So if you don't have a myth, death, or life that you want spellments for, farm this one on a low level. If you do have a spirit school, we're talking about life, we're talking about myth, we're talking about death, then your best bet is gonna be Vasek Ashweaver, and he's in the Grand Chasm. So in order to get to him, you gotta go to Vault 1933. So you take a left right when you enter the Grand Chasm, and it's honestly literally right here. It's you just go past him and it's he's literally right in that dungeon over here. Again, this is a very easy boss to farm if you have a high level, but you will get a bunch of death, life, and myth spellments from this vault right here. This vault 1933. Now, the only downside to farming Dragon Spire for your spellments in terms of fighting the bosses, you won't really get a lot of your rank one spellments. I'll say this: I don't think many of them are honestly that good. I would say the big ones, in my opinion, are Thunder Snake. I think Thunder Snake could be really worth it if you sharpen the blade. I think it's pretty damn good when you get all the way to the end. I also think Imp is pretty decent, which you won't get any Imps by farming Vasek. So, that might be a better, you might want to farm like, I don't know, Jade Oni or some Mushu boss and you'll start getting rank ones. You can definitely just use Spirit Retriever if you need it. There's a lot of ways to do it. But honestly, besides those two, you're going to get every spellment that you need from just those three bosses. But yeah, guys, that's the guide. It's honestly very simple. Honestly, you have it pretty easy if you're in the Celestial Quest line or below, but if not, you still have options. You just gotta get those Retriever Talons, you gotta farm the Shiratagi Temple, use Cantrips and Dragon Spire, and you're probably gonna be good to go. Let me know what you guys think of this Spellment Farming Guide. I hope this helped. I know a lot of people have been asking me where I got my Spellments. It is a little bit grindy, but I feel like once you know what to do, it actually gets pretty easy, especially if you're just trying to get to Tier 2. That's very, very doable now. As always, drop a like if you enjoyed, leave a sub if you're new, and if somebody has not told you you're awesome today, they're doing something wrong. Y'all, let me know if y'all want more guides and let me know what you want guides on. I, I'm more than happy to do them. I feel like I know a thing or two. So let me know. As always, stay awesome, y'all. And yeah, yeah.